John, what are you doing here? My voice quivered, betraying my shock. Vanessa, still slumming it, I see. Couldn't carve out a better life, huh? John replied, his smirk slicing through my uneasy calm. Standing in the middle of the outlet mall's chaotic maze of sales racks and oblivious shoppers, I felt time collapse around me. John Harris, my ex-husband, my mistake, my ghost, stood before me, as handsome and confident as ever. The years hadn't dulled his arrogance. It's been a long time, I said, summoning every ounce of composure I had left. Seeing him here, of all places, threw me off balance. I wasn't prepared for this confrontation, not at all. Fifteen years, he corrected, eyes narrowing. And I see you've taken a liking to bargain shopping. His words dripped with disdain. Guess that new husband of yours isn't making enough to spare you from the discount bin. My blood boiled, but I masked it with a forced smile. At least I have someone who doesn't walk out when things get tough. He raised an eyebrow, smirk fading momentarily. Tough? No, just unbearable, he snapped back. But look at you now, a little family of your own. Amazing how things change when you're not holding anyone back. Before I could respond, Greg's voice cut through the tension, warm and reassuring. Hey, Van, Ethan wants to know if we can grab ice cream after this. John's demeanor shifted. Gone was the snide tone and superior attitude. He turned, visibly taken aback by the sight of Greg and our children. I could see him recalibrate, eyes flicking to Ethan and Lily, assessing. Everything all right, honey? Greg asked, eyes flicking to John. Oh, it's just an old acquaintance, I said, hoping the lie wasn't too obvious. Greg Carter, Greg said, extending his hand. Vanessa's husband. John hesitated for a split second before shaking Greg's hand. John Harris, he mumbled. His eyes then landed on Lily and Ethan. Your kids? Yes, this is Lily, I said, patting my daughter on the shoulder. And Ethan. Ethan looked up curiously at John, innocence radiating from him. Hi, mister. John's face softened in a way I hadn't seen before, almost wistful. Then, with a sharp inhale, he collected himself. Nice to meet you all. And this is Oliver, my son. He gestured towards a boy waiting nearby. The resemblance to John was uncanny, but also there was something off, something gnawing at my intuition. Hi, Oliver, Greg greeted kindly. Oliver pulled a polite smile. Vanessa, sensing the strained silence, interjected, We should get going. Kids, say goodbye. As we walked away, I couldn't help but glance back. John stood there, a ghost from my past who somehow still held strings to my present. The chance encounter had rattled me more than I cared to admit. In the car, I took a deep breath. Are you okay? Greg asked softly. I nodded, but my mind raced. The sight of John after all these years, his spiteful words, and then the eeriness of his new family, it left me uneasy, like something darker lurked beneath the surface. This would not be the last time I saw John Harris. And with each encounter, old wounds would reopen, and new mysteries would unfold. Even now, a nagging feeling told me that today was just the beginning of something that could change everything. Little did I know, I was right. The drive home was quiet, too quiet. Greg, always quick to sense when something was off, finally broke the silence. You want to talk about it? I sighed, staring out the window at the passing scenery. That was John Harris, I admitted. Greg's grip tightened on the steering wheel. Your ex? Yeah, I mumbled, feeling the words stick in my throat. It brought back a lot of bad memories. Mom, who was that man? Lily asked from the back seat, her innocent curiosity piercing through the tension. Just someone from my past, sweetie. I forced a smile, trying to mask the unease spreading through me. Nothing you need to worry about. When we got home, Greg wrapped his arms around me, pulling me close. We've built a good life, Van. Don't let him drag you back into the past. I nodded, but his words were cold comfort. The encounter with John hung over me like a dark cloud. I needed to focus on what I had now. Greg, Lily, Ethan. That night, after the kids went to bed, I lay next to Greg in the dark, memories of the past washing over me. John leaving abruptly, his cutting words about my inability to have children echoing in my mind. Fifteen years ago, John had shattered my world. We were struggling with infertility treatments, each failed attempt driving a wedge between us. One day he just packed his bags and left, as if ten years of marriage meant nothing. The next morning, as I sipped my coffee, Greg joined me. You seem far away, he observed gently. Just thinking about everything, I replied. Seeing John stirred up a lot. I paused, the memory of John's son, Oliver, flashing in my mind. There was something about him, something I couldn't shake. 
You know, it's okay to feel uneasy, Greg said, placing a comforting hand over mine. But remember, whatever happens, we face it together. Later that day, I picked up Lily and Ethan from school. As they chatted about their day, I couldn't help but notice Oliver at the gate, waiting for his ride. His resemblance to John was undeniable, but there was something more. Mom, can Oliver come over for a play date? Ethan asked, bringing me back to the moment. Maybe someday, honey, I replied, my gaze still fixed on Oliver. Back home, I busied myself with chores, but my mind kept drifting back to John's cruel words and Hannah's apparent betrayal. How could someone so vile still have such a hold on me? Greg noticed my distraction. Van, you're doing it again, he said softly. Doing what? Letting John get to you, he replied, lifting my chin so I met his eyes. That man doesn't deserve another second of your thoughts. He was right. I needed to focus on my family on the present, but the nagging feeling wouldn't leave me. John's sudden appearance, those pointed remarks, it all felt like a warning, a sign that the past wasn't done with me yet. I decided that evening, as I tucked Lily and Ethan into bed, that I couldn't let John's reappearance unsettle our lives. But the questions lingered. What had really happened with John after he left? What secrets was he hiding now? Greg kissed me goodnight, his unwavering support a beacon in my stormy thoughts. We'll get through this, Van, just like we always have. As I drifted to sleep, I resolved to uncover the truth about John's new life. Whatever it took, I owed it to myself and my family to finally put the past to rest. I decided to take Lily and Ethan to the park over the weekend. Greg joined us as we tried to enjoy a peaceful family day. It worked for the most part, but every now and then my mind wandered back to John and his biting remarks. As the kids played on the swings, Greg squeezed my hand. You're thinking about him again, aren't you? I sighed. I can't help it, Greg. There's something that just doesn't sit right. Just then, we heard an all-too-familiar voice. Fancy seeing you here, Vanessa. I turned to see John, his smirk ever-present. His new wife, Hannah, stood beside him, looking impeccable, but holding an air of coldness. John, I acknowledged stiffly. Hannah. Enjoying family time? John scoffed, his tone dripping with sarcasm. It's cute, really. Hannah sized me up with a glance. I see you've moved on quickly after him. Yes, I have a wonderful family now, I said firmly, hoping to end the conversation. Oliver, playing nearby, ran over to join Ethan on the swings. Yet I couldn't help but notice Hannah keeping a close watch on him, almost protectively. John's gaze landed on Greg. You must have a lot of patience to deal with her, he sneered. Actually, Vanessa is amazing, Greg retorted, his voice calm. I'm the lucky one here, John barked a laugh. Amazing, right? Too bad she was barren and old for me. Greg shot up from the bench. Watch your mouth, Harris. Hannah put a hand on John's arm, trying to pull him back. John, not here. But John shrugged her off, stepping closer to us. Why should I? Vanessa needs to hear the truth. She failed as a wife, and she knows it. The anger in Greg's eyes matched the fury rising in my chest. That's enough, I said, and my voice low but steady. We're not your punching bags anymore. As if on cue, Ethan ran over, followed by Oliver. Mom, can Oliver come to our house sometime? Before I could respond, Hannah interjected. I don't think that's a good idea, Oliver. John glared at her, then back at me. Yes, Oliver. Wouldn't want him around your bad influence, Vanessa. Enough, I shouted, startling everyone, including myself. This petty need to belittle me in front of my family. It's pathetic, John. Greg stepped between us, facing John. You heard her. Stay away from us. John's eyes glinted with a twisted sort of satisfaction. He relished getting under my skin. Hannah pulled John away finally, giving me one last disdainful look. Keep your distance, she warned. As they walked away, I felt Greg's arms around me, grounding me. We won't let him get to us, he whispered. I promise. But he did get to us, I said quietly, watching Oliver look back at us curiously. There was more to John's life now, more I needed to uncover. His smugness, his nasty comments, they were hiding something. Back home, I shared my thoughts with Greg as we sat on the porch. John's changed, but not for the better. Something's not right in his world. Greg nodded. Then we find out what it is. We do it together. In that moment, I knew there was no turning back. John's vile nature and the mysterious family dynamic gnawed at me. I needed to discover the truth, not just for me, but for my family's peace. Whatever secrets John was hiding, I would uncover them, with or without his permission. 
the days after our park encounter passed in a blur. My mind kept drifting back to the final, miserable days of my marriage to John. The memory of endless infertility treatments dominated my thoughts, each failed attempt pulling us further apart until John eventually snapped. Vanessa, he had said back then, his voice cold and distant, I can't do this anymore. I need more from life than this endless cycle of disappointment. But we can adopt, I had pleaded, tears streaming down my face. We can still have a family. He had just shaken his head, packing his bags. You're barren and old, Vanessa. You can't give me what I need. I am done. Now, fifteen years later, I leaned on the kitchen counter, staring blankly into my coffee cup. Greg noticed me zoning out again and slid beside me, gently rubbing my back. Today's the day, you know. Day for what? For focusing on our current life. I thought maybe a picnic at the lake would be good. I nodded, trying to push the past away. Sounds great. Greg, Lily, Ethan, and I packed up and drove to the lake, our temporary escape. The kids ran ahead, laughing and playing, while we spread out the blanket and picnic basket. As I watched my children, I felt a sense of peace. Greg sat down beside me, handing me a sandwich. Remember, we're here now. This is what matters. I smiled, grateful for his support. My thoughts, however, kept creeping back to John's haunting words and Oliver's eerie resemblance to his mother, Hannah. After lunch, while the kids skipped stones along the water, I turned to Greg. You know, I can't help but think there's something more going on with John. Greg sighed, clearly aware I wasn't going to let this rest. If it's really bothering you, maybe it's time we dig a little deeper. But do it carefully, Van. The last thing we need is more drama. I nodded, relieved to have his support. Yeah, carefully. Her Over the next few weeks, I started piecing things together, reaching out to old contacts discreetly. Conversations with mutual acquaintances revealed John's troubled financial history and erratic behavior. Hannah's pristine social media posts painted a different picture. Her life seemed too perfect, too curated. One afternoon, as I was picking up the kids from school, I saw John's car parked outside. He was talking to Oliver, his expression tense. I caught snippets of their conversation. I told you to stay away from them, John snapped. But Dad... Ethan's my friend, Oliver protested, looking confused. You don't need friends like them, John hissed, eyes darting around as if afraid someone might overhear. John, I called out, walking towards them. Is there a problem? John's face twisted with anger. Stay out of this, Vanessa. Why do you always have to be so mean? Oliver shot back at his father before running off towards the school gate, tears in his eyes. Nice parenting, I scoffed. Back off, Vanessa. My family's none of your business, he spat. I looked him square in the eye. When you drag my family into your mess, it becomes my business. John stormed off, leaving me with a growing sense of unease. Clearly, things weren't as perfect in his new life as he wanted everyone to believe. But what was he hiding? That evening, I confided in Greg everything I had observed. There's something deeply wrong going on here. I can feel it. We'll find out what it is, Greg reassured. Step by step, we'll uncover the truth. And so, amidst happy family moments and unsettling encounters, the pursuit of truth began. John's scornful comments, Hannah's guarded nature, and the visible strain within their family reinforced my determination. Whatever lies were buried in John's new life, I would dig them up, and he would finally face the consequences. The next week, I finally opened up to Greg about my plan. Greg, I think we need to investigate John further— I can't shake the feeling that he's hiding something really big. Greg leaned back in his chair, thoughtful. All right, Vanessa. How do you want to start? My accounting skills can be useful here. Maybe I'll dig into his finances, look for any irregularities. Can you see if you've got any contacts who could help figure out what he's been up to? Greg nodded, determination etched on his face. We'll get to the bottom of this. Using old connections, Greg reached out to a private investigator he knew, while I began sifting through public records, tax filings, anything linked to John and Hannah. A few days later, with stacks of paperwork spread out on the dining table, I felt my first breakthrough approaching. Greg, look here, I said, pointing to a document. There's a company registered under Hannah's name that John seemed to funnel money into regularly. Why would he do that? Greg looked it over and frowned. That's odd. Maybe it's a front for something. Possibly. I agreed. But what? The weekend gave us the chance to focus even more. 
I think we should visit some of these addresses linked to the company, Greg suggested. It was late afternoon when we found ourselves outside a dilapidated warehouse. It felt like a scene from a movie, quiet, almost too quiet. We walked around the building, looking for anything unusual. As we turned a corner, we spotted John arguing with a rough-looking man. Did you think I wouldn't find out? The man growled. Back off, Larry. This isn't your business, John snapped. It is when you owe me. Larry shot back, their voices getting louder. Greg pulled out his phone and started recording discreetly. I watched, feeling a mix of fear and curiosity. Before we could gather more, John and Larry left, their argument echoing in the empty space. Back in the car, my heart raced. Did you get that? I asked Greg. Every word, he said, showing me the recording. Why is he dealing with shady people? I don't know, but we're getting closer, I said. Over the next few days, things got more complicated. The investigator Greg contacted found something crucial. John had a vasectomy years ago, meaning he couldn't have fathered Oliver. This revelation hit me like a truck. Greg, this changes everything, I said, shocked by the news. Greg's face hardened. We have to confront them. This is bigger than we thought. So, preparations began for an upcoming alumni event where we knew John and Hannah would be present. Greg printed out documents confirming the vasectomy, and I prepared myself for a public showdown. I spent evenings rehearsing what to say, fluctuating between anger and determination. Greg stayed close, his support unwavering. Remember, you're doing this for the truth, he reminded me. Finally, the night of the event arrived. My heart pounded as we approached the venue, arm in arm. Spotting John and Hannah, we headed straight for them. Vanessa, Greg, what a surprise, Hannah said, her smile tight. We need to talk, I declared, voice steady but loud enough to draw attention. John's eyes narrowed. What now? Greg pulled out the documents and handed them to John. Explain this, he demanded. John's face turned white, his bravado crumbling. You've been spying on me? Truth has a way of coming out, I said evenly. What do you have to say, John? The room grew silent, everyone's eyes on us. Hannah's face turned crimson as she understood what was happening. The web of lies and deceit was unraveling right before them, and there was no stopping it now. The truth about Oliver's parentage, John's vasectomy, and the financial irregularities, all exposed in public. As John faltered, trying to regain control, Hannah's tears and sputtered excuses sounded like hollow echoes in the room, filled with stunned silence. This confrontation was just a step in uncovering the deeper truth, but it was necessary. As we walked away, leaving the shocked crowd and shattered reputations behind, I felt a weight lift. The past no longer shackled me. Now I was ready to face whatever came next. The air was thick with tension as the whispers started, eyes glued to the scene unfolding in front of them. John stood there, hands shaking, holding the documents we just handed him. His attempt to maintain composure was failing miserably. "'What is this?' he stammered, glancing at the papers and then back at me. I crossed my arms, feeling a sense of vindication. "'It's proof, John. Proof of your lies. You had a vasectomy years ago. You couldn't have fathered Oliver.' Hannah's face turned pale as she tried to pull John away. "'This isn't the place for such accusations,' she hissed. "'Then when is the right time, Hannah?' I shot back, my voice loud enough for everyone to hear. Maybe you should explain how Oliver came to be. The crowd around us grew larger, their curiosity tinged with judgment. John swallowed hard, anger replacing his initial shock. You've gone too far, Vanessa. Too far? I laughed bitterly. You're the one who left me, who lied and cheated. This is just the truth coming out, John. Hannah's eyes filled with tears, but she remained silent. The room seemed to hold its breath, waiting for the next bomb to drop. Greg, standing beside me, placed a reassuring hand on my shoulder. We're not backing down, John. The facade ends here. With a burst of arrogance, John attempted to regain control. This doesn't prove anything. You can't destroy me with baseless accusations. I met his gaze, and for the first time, I saw fear lurking behind his anger. It's not baseless. We had a private investigator look into it. We have the proof. You're a fraud, John. Hannah broke down sobbing uncontrollably. This wasn't supposed to happen like this, she cried, her voice cracking. I didn't mean for it to go this far. The realization hit John like a ton of bricks. He turned to Hannah, his eyes wide with betrayal. You knew? Hannah nodded, unable to meet his eyes. I thought I could make it work, that you wouldn't find out. 
John's rage boiled over. You ruined everything, he shouted. You and your lies. I took a step forward, looking directly at Hannah. Why, Hannah? Why lie about a child's parentage? She looked up, tears streaming down her face. I wanted a family. I knew John wouldn't stay if he knew the truth. The room gasped, the weight of her confession hanging heavily in the air. Oliver, standing at the edge of the crowd, looked between John and Hannah, confusion and hurt etched on his young face. Oliver, I called gently. Come here, honey. He hesitated, but then walked towards me, his eyes searching mine for answers. Is this true? he whispered, his voice trembling. I knelt down, my heart breaking for him. It is, and I'm so sorry you had to find out this way. John turned to me, his voice low and dangerous. You've destroyed my family. Are you happy now? My answer was steady and resolute. No, John. You destroyed it with your lies. I just revealed the truth. Greg stepped in, pointing to the pile of evidence. We'll make sure everyone knows the truth, John. You can't hide behind lies anymore. As John and Hannah stood there, broken and exposed, Greg and I turned to leave. The whispers followed us out, the fallout of the confrontation spreading like wildfire. But for the first time in years, I felt a sense of closure. Back in the car, I took a deep breath. It's over, I said, a mix of relief and sadness washing over me. Greg squeezed my hand. It's over, and we did the right thing. Looking back at the venue, I knew the road ahead would still have challenges. But for now, the truth had prevailed. And that was enough. We drove home, ready to face whatever came next, together. We had barely stepped into the house when my phone rang. I glanced at the screen. It was Mary, an old friend from college who had been at the alumni event. Vanessa, what happened tonight? Everyone's talking about it, she said, her voice a mix of shock and curiosity. It's a long story, Mary. Just know that John's finally been exposed for who he really is, I replied, my voice more exhausted than triumphant. You did the right thing. I always knew there was something off about him, she said before we wrapped up the call. I sank into the couch, feeling the weight of the evening lift slightly. Greg brought over two cups of tea and sat down beside me. It's not over, you know, Greg said gently. John's not just going to go quietly. I know, I replied, but we'll face it together. The next morning, I found messages waiting for me, some supportive, others prying for more details. The town buzzed with gossip and I prepped myself for the fallout. Greg took the kids out for breakfast while I tackled emails and phone calls. Just as I was wrapping up, there was a loud knock on the door. I opened it to see John looking disheveled but still defiant. We need to talk, he growled. Fine, I responded, letting him in. But I'm not going to be bullied in my own home, John. He paced the living room, his agitation palpable. You couldn't leave it alone, could you? You had to dig up crap to ruin me. You ruined yourself, John, I said, standing firm. I just made sure the truth came out. You've taken everything from me. My career, my reputation, my family, he shouted, his face turning red. Your lies are what took those things, I replied, my voice calm but strong. You did this to yourself. His eyes narrowed as he leaned closer. You think this is over? I'll make sure you regret this. Leave, I said coldly. Now. He glared at me but turned to leave, slamming the door behind him. Greg and the kids returned shortly after. I didn't want to alarm them, so I kept the conversation light while Greg read the tension in my face. Later, when the kids were in their rooms, I filled him in on John's visit. We need to be careful, Greg said, his concern evident. John's desperate, and desperate people do desperate things. Days passed with John's threatening words lingering in my mind. Then, one evening, I noticed a car tailing me on my way home from work. My heart raced, but I tried to stay calm, taking different routes until I lost them. At home, I shared my concerns with Greg. Someone was following me today. I'm sure of it. Greg frowned. We'll need to be more cautious. I'll call the investigator and see if he can help. True to his word, Greg arranged extra security measures while I coordinated with the investigator. Evidence and paternity tests were filed, safeguarding our position. A week later, the investigator's findings revealed more of John's dealings, financial fraud, illicit business ties, and much more. We compiled the evidence, preparing for the storm that was sure to follow. With legal protection in place, Greg and I met with an attorney to discuss the next steps. Given the evidence, we can press charges against John, the attorney explained. 
but this could get messy, especially with the public exposure. We're prepared for that, I said firmly. He needs to face the consequences. Back at home, I prepared dinner while Greg helped the kids with their homework. It was a brief moment of normalcy, a reminder of what I was fighting to protect. My phone buzzed again. This time it was an email from the attorney, detailing the initial steps for the case. I shared the news with Greg, who looked both concerned and relieved. We're in for a long fight, he said, wrapping an arm around me, but we'll make it through, together. Watching Lily and Ethan at the dining table, I felt a sense of renewed determination. John's downfall wasn't just about revenge. It was about protecting my family and ensuring they knew integrity and truth had a place in our lives. And so, with the calm before the legal storm, we steeled ourselves for the battle ahead, unified and unyielding in our pursuit of justice. The courtroom was silent, except for the hum of tense whispers. John sat across from us, his face a mask of defiance, while Hannah fidgeted beside him, her eyes red from crying. Greg squeezed my hand, a silent reminder that we were in this together. The judge called the session to order, and our attorney rose to present the case. Your Honor, we have compelling evidence showing financial fraud, manipulative behavior, and the falsification of paternity. As the evidence was laid out, document by document, John's composure faltered. His attorney tried to object, but the judge allowed the presentation to continue. The room held its breath as the details of John's deceit unraveled. Hannah broke down during her testimony. I didn't know what else to do. John demanded perfection, and I was terrified he'd leave if I told the truth about Oliver. John shot her a look of pure venom. You're pathetic, he spat. The judge banged his gavel. Order in the court. After hours of testimonies, the judge adjourned the session, announcing a ruling the next day. The tension was palpable as we left the courtroom. Outside, Greg pulled me into a supportive hug. We've done everything we can, Van, he whispered. I know. Now we wait. That night, sleep was a distant friend. I lay in bed, staring at the ceiling, replaying the day's events. Greg's steady breathing beside me was a small comfort. Tomorrow would bring closure, one way or another. Morning came quickly. As we drove to the courthouse, my heart pounded with anticipation. Back in the courtroom, the judge entered, looking stern. After careful deliberation, the court finds the defendant, John Harris, guilty on multiple counts of fraud and deceit. Custodial rights over Oliver are hereby contested, pending further investigation. John's face crumpled, his arrogance replaced by panic. He stood up, pointing at me. This is your fault, Vanessa. You and your vendetta. I stood my ground. No, John. This is the consequence of your actions. You did this to yourself. As the court officers escorted John and Hannah out, a sense of immense relief washed over me. We had won. The truth had prevailed. Outside, the sun shone brightly. Greg hugged me tightly, and the kids ran up, their innocent faces asking if everything was finally over. Yes, it's over, I said, smiling through tears. We're free. In the days that followed, the legal battles continued over Oliver's custody. John's reputation was shattered, leaving him scrambling to pick up the pieces of his once-dominant life. Greg and I focused on our family, making sure Lily and Ethan felt safe and loved. Despite the turmoil, we found moments of peace. One evening, as we sat on the porch, I noticed Oliver approaching our house, looking hesitant. Vanessa? he asked, his voice small. Yes, Oliver. Can I, can I stay here for a bit, with you and your family? Tears welled up in my eyes as I looked at Greg, who nodded. Of course, you can, I said, opening my arms to him. Our family welcomed Oliver with open hearts. Over time, he became part of our lives, finding stability and care among us. The scars left by John's manipulation slowly healed, replaced by the bonds we formed together. Through the chaos, we emerged stronger, bound by truth and love. As we watched the kids play in the yard, Greg held me close, whispering, We did it. Yes, I whispered back, feeling a deep sense of satisfaction and hope. We did. With John's downfall behind us and our family closer than ever, we faced the future, knowing that we had overcome the shadows of the past. Our story was one of resilience, proof that no matter how dark the times, light could always break through. And so we moved forward, hand in hand, ready for whatever came next.